Hi, and welcome to the Two Minute Warning. I'm your host, Perry Busby. Two Minute Warning is brought to you by the Westside Gazette newspaper, one of South Florida's oldest African American owned newspaper that has been serving the South Florida Tri County area for over 50 years. Uh, our, uh, my usual co host, uh, <laughs> Mr. Bobby Henry, again, isn't with me. Uh, I'm going to start docking that brother's check. <laughs> uh, but joining me is my good friend Hello. and a uh, very able co host. Uh, David Wright. So good to see you, David. Good to see you too, my brother. How are you today? Doing fine, doing fine. And you? So <laughs> well, let's well, get always, started. Yeah, I always have to say how humble I am just to be able to uh, sit in uh, for the Mr. The infamous Mr. Bobby R. <laughs> Henry. Uh, I, I do take this as an honor and I, I just hope I can fill his shoes in some case to uh, make this broadcast worthy. Okay. Well, no, you are a very able co-host and uh, uh, makes it comfortable to have good friends sit here and have a good conversation with. And uh, one of the good things is uh, when David comes on, we get to have a good conversation before the show. So (laughs) we're just going to jump right in. and uh, but first of all, I want to say welcome to all of you for joining us tonight. Uh, we know it's election season. Know that uh, everyone's on high alert, and everyone's wondering how this is going to uh, how this election is going to turn out. So, uh, thank you for joining us and being with us through this season, so that we can understand and learn and grow together. Uh, learn who these prospective leaders are that are asking for this cherished thing that we own called the vote. So, David, how what what have what had what how has it been? I am not in uh, not in Broward. In fact, I'm not even in Florida. I'm still in Texas. So, fill me in. How are things going in the first three days of voting? Well, Perry, the word on the street is. Um, we're having extremely low turnouts. Now that's Mm. people actually going to the polls for the early vote. Mm -hmm. Some of the mail-in ballots are showing a a bit different. And I think you have some statistics that are going to validate that. But uh, we do know that that there are still brothers and sisters out there, uh, people of all races that just don't do the mail-in ballots. So Mm -hmm. it's important that we continue to encourage them to get out to vote. Um, as you know, there are always those uh, events going on uh, through the churches and through various community groups to get mm-hmm. souls to the polls or just get folks to the polls, as I would say. Right. So we just want to continue to encourage, encourage that. If you know of anyone that um, needs rides, things of that nature, uh, needs help understanding the ballots and some of those amendments that are on there and some of the... Uh, the, the judicial positions that are on the ballots. You really want to get the support, the help, the understanding of how you want to cast your vote. We can't tell you how. We don't endorse candidates, but we do want you to know it's vitally important. Right. And if you are a group or organization that is offering uh, some of the services that Brother Wright uh, indicated or more, uh, please reach out so that uh, we can help uh, shed some light on your efforts. Uh, uh, No effort is too little in this, at this point. And uh, we need to work together. This is time to uh, put perceived differences aside. Uh, We have a common goal here. And so if you know of any organization, uh, please put it in the chat tonight so that we can at least uh, acknowledge it and and put the word out there. Um, and if you're gonna put it, and, and let me just add this: if you're gonna put a number out there, let's put a number out there that people are gonna get a response to. 
you know, <laughs> times are too critical. And I know we shouldn't have to say that, but again, we, we're dealing in some realities. Let's make sure that the information is correct, because if it isn't, believe me, we're going to hear about it at the West Side Gazette and we're going mm. people are going to call. So, again, we want we want to know that this is all hands on deck. So please share that information with us and we'll make sure that it gets on air and people will see it. Mm -hmm. And Perry, I might add, uh, you know, our viewers are avid. They, they're on this show quite often and they've seen so many of the candidates. So I'm going to mm -hmm. put a challenge out there. I'd like for the two minute warning viewers to just do their due diligence, not saying you're not, but if we can take mm -hmm. it or, or ratchet it up a notch, uh, that's going to help Broward County. And, and as you know, mm -hmm. this is a, a blue county. Uh, so, you know, if, if we truly want to sustain that blue ability, we're going to have to continue to get out there and do our due diligence. So the challenge to the uh, two minute warning uh, audience is uh, uh, just do your best. Call your friends, get on the phone, use your social media, uh, whatever influence you may have. Um, now is the time to use it. Yes, I, I agree. And uh, I noticed that someone in our poll, uh, someone in the audience uh, has commented and said that uh, at the Lauder Hill Mall uh, Supervisor of the Elections Office, the uh, turnout is at 970 after three days. And thank you for that uh, from the uh, city of Lauderdale Lakes Commissioner seat number two. Uh, and, and thank you, because we, uh, as David said, uh, we've been calling around asking for numbers. Uh, uh, and some places turnout has been high, but in uh, some areas it has been problematic. And uh, many of those areas are areas that we are familiar with. Uh, just to give you a brief rundown in terms of vote by mail, uh, I did talk to the SOE's office and uh, we know that on the first day they mailed out over 300,000 uh, ballots and right now that uh, estimated uh, number of requests sits at a little above 392,000 uh, and so far of that 127,432 have been returned and so we're not quite halfway and so again we just want to encourage you if you requested it if you have not received it contact the soe's office to inquire about it we know that sometimes especially in this season the mail is running a little different let's not be apathetic about it if if you requested it and it has been you know some time let's call back uh to to check on it uh, and see what's happened because uh, we, we can't afford to let good efforts uh, be wasted by, you know, a lackluster effort uh, to get it back in return. Uh, and also, uh, in terms of the turnout at some of the locations, as the viewer said, uh, the Fort Lauderdale uh, Mall had 970, but some of our key areas such as uh african american research library has 819 epet larkins is sitting at uh hold on let me see epet larkins is sitting at 530 and again these uh when you compare these to some of the other places the west regional library who is a little bit over 1900 and the west and the western branch library is over 2000 sometimes this could be a result of people voting closer to where they work as opposed to where they live and i'm not sure quite what to read into those numbers but for those voting locations uh within our areas to have that turnout uh is really problematic and the reason why i'm saying it's problematic is because in the next cycle when it becomes time to determine the usage of space for early voting uh it's hard to it's hard to justify those locations with with small turnouts and so again uh even though i'm not in the area i always early vote at the african-american research library because i know that traffic 
has other has other implications as it relates to voting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Perry, uh, as one of the uh, viewers just kind of mentioned about the Georgia turnout, you know, it, it's so much at stake in Georgia. And I, I get it. Uh, but we have to know that there's so much at stake everywhere, even here in South Florida. And when mm -hmm. we talk about women's right to choose and, you know, these debt forgiveness for student loans and things of that nature, our infrastructure, our prescription drugs. If you're concerned about that, if you know anyone that's going to be impacted by that, um, you need to vote. Yeah. Yes, we do. And uh, yes. Uh, and what is happening in Georgia? I mean, we don't have to look for for to Georgia. There are some of the same uh, shenanigans and practices or political maneuvering, whatever you want to call it, being played right here uh at this at right now there is a senate a state senate race uh for the district that encompasses florida state and fam U, and we have a republican candidate that doesn't quite resemble herschel walker but they're running under the same premise of being uh a star athlete that will appease to you know, supposedly black males and, and those who are uh, committed to Florida State football. The candidate up there, Corey Simmons, as I indicated, we did reach out to his campaign. We wanted to talk to him because what is his position on, a, you know, on those things that impact FAMU and Florida State, those institutions that we all say that we love? and uh, claim to be alumni from. And so uh, he's running against uh, Lauren Osley, uh, one of the Democrat Democrats who's been in uh, the state Senate. And as we talked to Senator Chevron Jones last week, they're already at a seven person deficit. And so to see some of these same maneuvers to happen in the county that encompasses Gaston County, the only county in Florida that has a majority black population, to begin to see these uh, political maneuverings is very telling. And it says we need to get involved. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But as they say, Brother David, all politics are local and we know we can go on, uh, but we do need to look at our local race and so happy to have a candidate with us tonight uh, who is running uh, for the, let me get it, is it the Lauderdale Lakes City Commission seat uh, two? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Nelthel Stevens. Uh, Dr. Stevens is a uh, is the CEO of Stevens Consulting Group. Uh, she received her doctorate in leadership, and I'm interested to hear about this mm. degree and these mm. skills that she brings to the table. And she has, as I told, a very accomplished uh, uh, bio that includes participation from everything from uh, the uh, local Lauderdale Lake City Commissioner seat, uh, being a volunteer to being on the North Broward County Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta. So she checks off some very significant boxes. And so without further delay, I'm going to let her introduce herself, Dr. Nelto Stevens. Good evening. Good evening. And I am so excited to be here with you guys tonight. As Mr. Busby said, the resume is just some boxes that you check off. I have to say the greatest accomplishment that I have is really being sold out for Jesus Christ. And Amen. I think that's really what brings me to this point and to this place to even be seeking a, an office because it is my goal to serve as a breath of fresh air. I've been telling everybody that I've been talking to a lot of times we hear politicians talk about or candidates talk about, I just want to see that table. I'm like, Jesus, I don't want to see that at table. I'm going to turn the table 
over. <laughs> because I feel that we have created tables that are complacent and that have compromised. And so my goal is to bring innovation, to bring excellence, to bring experience, and more importantly, change. Mm -hmm. And so part of all the things, all of the job experiences, all of the educational experiences that I've had has prepared me for this moment. Um, mm -hmm. I've been the director of compliance at the Seminole Tribe of Florida, and I've worked for the federal government um, in QA and overseeing budgets, and I've I've done nonprofit. I'm currently an administrator at my church at the best church in the world, Redeemer World Christian Center International. <laughs> Shout out to my pastors who are watching, Pastor Lonnie and Jarrell Brinson. Mm -hmm. All of that, all of that has prepared me for this moment because mm -hmm. as we talked about all of these things about voting, it somebody needs an uncompromised voice that will stand up for the least, the lost, and the left out. Mm -hmm. And so that's why mm -hmm. I'm running for office. It's my time. It's my season. I feel like I bring the passion. Psalm 78 and 72 says that David shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and the skillfulness of his hands. And mm -hmm. I think we've had politicians, we've had candidates that have had passion, but they've lacked skill. And tonight mm -hmm. I bring them both. Awesome. Right. Awesome. <laughs> well said. Well said. Well, I don't know, uh, Daria, you wanted to jump in first. I, I'm, I'm totally excited. She mentioned Yeah, me, so I am. You know. I am. <laughs> but, you know, one of the things that we're excited about, and I want to help get some other people excited, can you explain where your district is? Because sometimes people assume they're living somewhere. Like, I'm not from here. Mm -hmm. So understanding these boundaries helps. So can you please explain to our audience who is excited what your potential what if they are in your potential district so i i'm so glad that you want me to talk about that mr busby because lauderdale lakes although we have seats that are assigned it is a citywide election so lauderdale mm -hmm. lakes we call it the heart of broward county 3.7 mm -hmm. square miles um, the borders, if I can just give you, if you live between 31st and up until where you get to the Turnpike, um, where Florida Memorial is, if you're nestled between 44th and 19th Street, um, you're somewhere in Lauderdale Lakes. And so um, our main highway, of course, is Oakland Park um, and 441 and 31st. And we have so many communities, but we have seats. But if you live in Lauderdale Lakes, you can vote for Dr. Stevens. Great, 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 great. Glad to hear that. Right. So, and my so, question, yeah, oh, yeah. If, if I can, and, and just jump right in there, um, what made you want to run for office? What made you want to run for this particular seat at this time? I always tell the story that I thought that I was going to be Katanji Brown Jackson. I always had an affinity for law. I put it in my yearbook. I'm a graduate of the Diller High School. And so I always was interested in government and law, but life dealt me a different set of hands and I moved more into um, another career path. But I've always had a passion for really advocating. People that know me, they know that I'm always advocating for other people. I'm always taking on fights that don't belong to me. And so it was in 2010 that I had an opportunity. Um, at that time, Lavoie Williams was um, one of my employees with the federal government. And he decided that he wanted to run for commission again at Lakes and asked me to be his campaign manager. And mm. so I delved into Lakes and I fell in love with politics all over again. And I always said, one day, now listen to this. This is how prophetic it was. Mm -hmm. One day I'm going to be a commissioner in that city. And fast forward, 2016, Lauderdale Lakes Vikings, their football and cheer program was always a stellar program. Mm -hmm. um, but they went through some challenges. In, in 2016, there was a rebuild that took place. And I was called to be a part of that rebuild. So I started doing work in the city. And in 2018, I, 2017, I started the process of buying another home. I had a home a while ago, but then I bought another home. And so I remember telling my real estate agent, I want it new. And this is the amount that I want my mortgage to be. And so she called me and said, uh, sis, 
I found something, but it's in Lauderdale Lakes. I said, I don't even want to look at it. I am buying it because I am supposed to be a commissioner. And here it is five years later, the number of grace. I put it in. And what really prompted me is my pastor began to teach a sermon called As You Go. And the premise of the sermon was that we always think that everything we're called to do is inside the four walls of the church. But as you show up in your life daily, as I show up on the field, as you show up, like you guys, you're, you have this, this media, this live stream, as you're doing what you have been put on this earth to do, that is really ministry. Mm -hmm. And so it was at that time that I was like, you know what? It's my season. It's my opportunity. An open seat became available and I put in my application. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the things that you see that Lauderdale Lakes needs with a Dr. Stevens on the commission? What are some of the areas that you see uh, that can help enhance the area or, or continue on some of the work that is happening? I always say just because we are small don't mean we don't have to be excellent. And so one of the things, that, a couple of things that I'm passionate about, having the opportunity to chair the economic development advisory board, having the opportunity to chair the budget advisory board, it has given me an opportunity to see some ways that I can add value. And so my three top areas in terms of adding value to the great We Care City is economic development, code enforcement, and services to our vulnerable populations, which is our youth and our elderly. So when I look at economic development, economic development is really the engine for any city. It is a proven fact that cities with more resources are better equipped to provide for their communities. And let me repeat that. It is a proven fact that cities that have more resources are really more equipped to provide for their communities. And so it's a misconception with me being the chair that people think economic development is just about bringing businesses to the city. It is much greater than that. In essence, really, when you look at economic development, it, you're looking at increasing revenue streams for the city. You're talking about providing jobs in the city. You're talking about providing a wide variety of opportunities for your resident. And so my goal is to work with our city to develop an, an at-ease process for people to do business with us. Um, we've heard complaints from residents or business owners that, that the process that we have in place currently, sometimes it's taking businesses 12 months, 18 months, and it could be on the business part, but it's hard to track. I know we've started the process of an online process so that people can check where their permits are in the process, where their application, their business tax receipt is in the process. So it's really working with them to really develop and fine tune those programs. And then when we look at code enforcement, one of the things that I really want to focus on is really bolstering our code enforcement. My whole, I'm on a mandate and a mission to, to help people. We're going to train them how to treat a lot of their legs. A lot of times when you allow people to do, when you allow, I know property owners that have properties in other cities, they don't keep them the way they keep them in a lot of their legs. <laughs> And so we're going to train you how to treat us, whether it be business owners, whether it's residents, whether it's the county, whether it's the state, whether it's the federal government, you're going to treat a lot of the lakes with respect like you treat any other city. And so that's one of the things that, that I really want to focus on, because I always say our code enforcement officers, they serve like greeters in Walmarts. When you go in Walmart, that greeter is going to frame your shopping experience. And so I feel like our code enforcement, they are our first line defenders. A lot of times they're the problem solvers, they're the mediators, they're the communicators, they're the researchers, and they are the ones that bear the standard for our city. So I really, really, really want to work and put in some diligence in that, in, in that department that will not only help our residents, but also help our businesses that do business. And then finally, really working on programs like we have some great opportunities for our youth. 
really enhancing them even more. We know that when you begin to develop programs and services that maximize out of school time, guess what? They're not breaking in my house and they're not breaking in your house. Mm -hmm. And so really mm -hmm. offering those programs, a diverse range of programs, it don't have to just be athletics. What about some STEM programs and leadership programs? Mm -hmm. The city does some things, but really, really add value to that. And then really working with our elderly. What I found on the campaign trail that a lot of those are disengaged. We have our commission meetings and I know I may be going out on a limb. Our meetings are held 7 p.m. on second and um, fourth Tuesdays. Grandma don't want to be driving home at eight o'clock at night in the dark. So really looking at an innovative way, how do we engage our seniors? Mm -hmm. Can we have a quarterly commission meeting at noon or Saturday morning where we can get our elderly more engaged so that they, because those are the ones that have the time to volunteer. Those mm -hmm. are the ones, but listen, they don't want to be driving home at night. Yeah. And so those are just some of the things right. and some of the creative ways um, that we can, that I see that we can add value to our city. Mm -hmm. You know, you hit on some really great points there, and I and I, I got to give a shout out to your youth program uh, over at the city of Lauderdale Lakes. I had the opportunity of being a part of one of the summer programs over at the library, and uh, shout out to uh, Mr. Mullins over there and, and what I've learned about their program. And this was a STEMS related program mm -hmm. uh, that they paid these students to 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 also not only learn but got paid at the same time. So um, kudos to what's been established. Yes. But we do have a question there in the chat that basically asked, um, when elected, will you consider meeting with each of the condo boards and the condo communities within the city? I am glad that it looks like Hester Samuels asked that question. Absolutely. That is what I want to do. The second Monday of every month, I'm going to name it Make It Happen Monday where I'm going to be engaged in the community. What I've heard from so many residents is there's a disengagement once people get into office. It's like, we're knocking on doors. We're meeting with condos association. We're showing up at meetings when we want to get in the seat. But then once we get in, that there's, there's no attention given. So that's my whole goal. I really want people engaged in our city commission meetings. When I fell in love with this city, those meetings used to be packed. Since I moved in this city, you may get two or three people, and we know COVID happened. But one of the things on two on last night, we they had a graduation um, for Tuesday night at the commission meeting. They had a graduation, and the room was packed. The energy in the room was good. So I definitely want to reach out on when I'm elected and become your next because I go to a church of faith, so it's already done. When I become your next commissioner, <laughs> I am interested in sitting down with every homeowner's association president and every condo association board because we have to work together. So that's what I'm doing. I am a people's person. I like meeting with the people. And guess what? As a candidate, we only have a platform of what we think we want to do. It's not until you get in the seat. I always say, Everybody think they can be president until they become president. It, it looks yes. easier until you get in a seat. So part of, of, the, of the assimilation of becoming a commissioner is really sitting down. And that's part of my 90 day plan is meeting with every homeowners association president and every condo association. So thank you so much for asking that question. Yeah. Um, and I, I know that, you know, running, we try to, meet all of the immediate things that we think are on the table for voters. Um, but I always believe that voters like to hear about someone who can paint a future. Uh, what is what what would you like to see Lauderdale looks like in the next five years? And what are your efforts to help it get there? What are some of the things you'd like to see either be initiated or happen? within Lauderdale Lakes in the next five, seven years? So some of the things I, I, and it's like every day, although I'm campaigning, I'm at early voting sites, it's like I'm already waking up with vision, like, okay, this is what I want to do. We literally just put free Wi-Fi in all our parks. And so I was just having a conversation with one of my campaign members, like, what would it be like if our whole city had Wi-Fi? We have a lot of people that work from home. We have a lot of home-based businesses. We have a lot of um, youth in our community um, that have to do homework. What if 
we provided free Wi-Fi in our entire city. Those were some of the things I'm looking at. I don't know if you know this, but a lot of the lakes used to be the city. And when I say the city, a lot of the lakes mall was busting. The movie theater, the best popcorn next door. And guess what? Uh, Before Starbucks became a phenomenon, guess what the first one was in this region? Right there at Lauderdale Lakes Mall. So we're talking about yeah. attracting big change businesses, not to put our small businesses out, but to really begin to make this city. They've already started some things, but really move it forward, thrive it forward, making sure that 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 everything we do, staff is competent, that that all of our leaders are equipped, that all of our communities are engaged. Our city is becoming so diverse. I know they always say, oh, lot of the lakes is the city where it's just the makings. Listen, where I live at in Bella Vista, Chinese, white people, black people, Jamaican, Haitian, it is a very diverse, not only in ethnicity, but also in age. Young professionals like myself are buying homes in lot of the lakes. So I really want to see. And so when we're young, we're, we're forward thinking. So things like maybe free Wi-Fi, we have some things planned for a community center. But really, because we're so, we're, it's not like we're 10 miles, we're 3.7 miles. But I would even like to see us grow bigger than that. You know, and I know they've talked before about annexing, but Lauderdale Lakes have so many great things to offer. And so pushing us forward would to be really begin to start moving us to being more in the online processes for all of the things, making sure people, our residents, our business owners have access at ease at what we're doing, but really, really, really start tr attracting back those large chain, chain businesses in our community. Great. Yes. So, so Dr. Stevens, you know, um, we're in South Florida mm -hmm. and uh, Lauderdale Lakes is faced with a lot of the same challenges that other cities are having. Uh, in your case, um, there's, there's not a lot of space. You talked about the 3.7 miles. Uh, and we've seen a lot of growth throughout the county, especially when we look east toward the city of Fort Lauderdale and a lot of growth and high rises in that area. Um, what are your thoughts there? Are, are, are you anticipating some additional growth there, especially when it comes to housing and the old question about affordable housing? What, what are your thoughts there and what do you possibly or potentially see happening in Lauderdale Lake? Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Wright. And yes, we, we do have some other mixed use facilities that are being planned in our city, but we've grown tremendously. Um, on Commercial Boulevard, we've added, I think it's like 420 brand new units uh, off of Commercial before you get 4, 441. People think it's Tamarack, but that road is Tamarack, but those units belong to Yolanda Lakes. Where I live in Bella Vista, they did 30 townhomes and 129 villas. And then we have 317 new apartments that was just built over here. And then we have over 80 something half a million dollar homes that are being right on the corner, being built on the corner of Oakland and 31st and some future plan projects. So yes, we do have some housing projects that are being planned. And when you talk about affordable housing, the issue is Florida, we all know is in a state of emergency when it comes to our property um, insurance. And part of the affordability for housing is the insurance and the tax issue. You know, like for a lot of the lakes, our millage rate stayed the same, 8.6. But people like to jump up and say, ooh, my property value increased. Your property value increased. Guess what? Your property taxes will increase. And so it's really about educating our residents how that works. Um, and I know the city have meetings where the, where the uh, property appraiser comes out and talks about this is your bill. This is how it's read. But we really, 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 in order to deal with affordable housing, we have to address the on a, on a statewide level, the insurance crisis that we're faced with as a state. Because if you have a FHA, FHA mortgage, FHA mortgage, your mortgage could be one price, but your escrow with your taxes and insurance, when your insurance jumps and increase, your mortgage goes up. And so we know so many people that don't have an affordable mortgage, not because the mortgage increased, but because their property taxes and their insurance has increased. So we really got to work with that. Lauderdale Lakes has a lot of different programs that we work with our existing homeowner, minor home repair program. We have a homeowner insurance program. A lot of residents don't know about that, but we have programs that can assist 
mm. um, people that are having issues with the homeowner insurance. So we do offer services for that. And we, we try to help people stay in their homes, fix up their homes, because we are the great we care city. Mm. Y'all need to share that with the entire state. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Uh, and uh, I know you said you were coming in to turn over tables if necessary. <laughs> uh, but let me just rephrase that. Um, and I know that you have uh, a working relationship with the existing commission. Your your work precedes you. Mm -hmm. uh, but do you see yourself more or less being a a voice? Uh, um, in the wilderness, or 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 how do you see your campaign helping to move with these great ideas, uh, being able to help move these other uh, position holders, for lack of a better word, across the dais? Uh, how, how do you, how do you see how do you see yourself helping to move beyond what has become just the status quo? So one of the things, one of my strengths is that I am a consensus builder. You never can't argue with facts. And so one of the things that I've done extremely well is I know how to work with, with my colleagues in any given. I don't care what environment it is because we understand that the work I'm very, nothing is ever personal with me. It's, it's very focused on those that have elected us in the needs of our, our community and our city. And so being able to really stay focused on who is this really about? There's no personal agendas with me. There's no hidden agendas with me. I don't owe nobody no favors. I don't owe nobody no promises. You know, a lot of times when we're running for office, this one don't help you do this one. So you got to owe this favor. You can't do what's right because right. you got too many people that you owe. So that's why it's almost like a person that has a broken soul. You have so many soul ties that you're not whole. I don't have soul ties to nobody or nothing. The only people that I have a that I have a allegiance to are the people that elected me. And so really keeping the commission focused on that and really building consensus. And when you start moving, forward, I'm an innovator. And John Maxwell, I'm a, I'm a trained, certified John Maxwell leadership teacher. And one of the things we know, he said, everything rises and falls on leadership. The, the commissioners, the board, they have a fiduciary and a governance responsibility, not the day to day. And I think a lot of times we have commissioners that focus on I'm trying to be in charge. I want to get this one higher. I want my little pet project. No, 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 no. We are governance and we are have a fiduciary responsibility. So really helping them really streamline and focus. We need to look at where the money is and we need to look at how our city manager is leading those that are called to carry out all the things that we want to do. So I think that really building consensus and helping them know that, you know, you only have one vote. We only have one vote. I'm, Nathaniel, Dr. Stevens only had one vote, but if you can really build consensus and keep people focused on what, what is in front of us and not all of these personal issues, then we're okay. We got to get rid of focusing on personal, whether I don't, I'm not, yeah, I wasn't elected to like for you to like me. I was elected so that we can get things moving. And so I think that that is the focus. Okay. You know, that's so important in, in today's politics. I mean, if, if we're not working together, if we're not reaching across the aisles, if we're not seeing the big picture and, and, and who put us in office to begin with, and at the end of the day, it's all about our constituents. It's all about this community. And if you have a love and a passion for this community, you should, you should definitely be doing the right thing. Um, I, I kind of got a question, though, I guess, a lot of people like to ask politicians what are they going to do their first day in office. But um, I always like to ask, um, I'm already, I'm, I'm like you, I'm, I'm seeing you in your position. Uh, but we always want to know who are, who are you mentoring? Who are you working with uh, to kind of prepare our future for future candidates? Um, and maybe you're still on the young side and haven't really gotten there yet, but just kind of clue me in. Are you involved with any type of mentorship program dealing with uh, people, young people that want to become uh, elected officials? Well, I know I look young. 
<laughs> oh, I look very young, but I'm actually um, next year I'll be 50 years old. But it's so funny that you ask that because that's one of the things I've been talking as I've been at the early voting sites. We've lost that in our community. We've lost mentoring younger people. We want to die out in our office. That's how we want to do. We want to keep an office for 50 years where we become stale. We don't want nothing fresh and new and innovative to come along. And I've already, I'm one of the young, young gentlemen that's been working with my campaign, um, Roosevelt McClary. He's very young. He has the fire in his belly for, for government. He's ran for office before um, unsuccessfully, um, but there's a fire in his belly. And I think one of the things that we're missing is you can't tell people anything anymore. Um, we have we have crises in a lot of our cities because you have people sitting, you're a commissioner, you don't go to no type of training. As much as I know, I know Robert Rules of Order, I run organization, I'm the first vice president of North Broward County Delta Sigma Theta, so I know how to run a meeting. So I know the technical stuff, I know leadership, but do you really know governance? Do you, have you ever been a commissioner, Nathel? And so what happens is we don't get the proper training. So we don't know what to do. We don't know what we're looking at. And so I've committed myself to working with him because he has that, that passion. He has that fire. And I'm, I'm working with him to bring him along that journey, just like so many have worked with me. I mean, Lavoie and Beverly and Hazel and Marilyn and Veronica. I mean, the current committee, they've been working with me. Um, hey, Nathel, do this. What do you need? What Have any questions? And a lot of times people are like, just because they're working with you, I'm not them. I'm not going to become them because we all have separate DNAs. And so um, we have to get back to preparing the next generation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Great answer. Great answer. Perry? Yeah. Okay. No. Uh, wow. That's one of the places where I was going with this was uh, as you've been out and we spoke earlier about, uh, you know, the lack of participation. I can see you on the campaign trail. You, the one thing you don't have is a lack of participation, but, but uh, what are some of the surprising things that you've, uh, experience out on the campaign trail that can, uh, again, help us understand, you know, this new voter uh, group that we're looking at. I think one of the things is that has really been a grievance to me is the disengaged voter. I have mm -hmm. not on so many doors, doors talked to so many people, even at early voting sites. There's like, oh, no, I'm not voting. You're not what? So we've lost it somewhere. You know, I think about the Bible when they say there was a generation after Joshua that arose that knew the Lord thy God not. And I mm -hmm. feel like we have that when it comes to being engaged with voting. I mean, when I graduated high school, like you, when you got your driver's license, you registered to vote. Mm -hmm. You got your voter registration card. And so the, the disengaged voter and really educating them the importance of voting. And then mm -hmm. voters that um, really communication, you know, we've talked to so many, I don't know none of the commissioners. So there's this disengagement in terms of, you know, we have three, I think it's 36,626 residents as, after the last census. And so there's impossible for five commissioners to knock on all 36,000. And so it, it has to be a way to get them involved. It's like, you don't come to commission meeting. You don't participate in no city events. So the disengagement or the disconnection of the residents from being even engaged in the city that they live in. And so that has been one of the most surprising things. Yeah. Well, and I guess I would ask, do you think that maybe they disengaged because it was perceived that the elections were held in private hands? Uh, I mean, we, we have to look at the reality when you say that there are people who've been mm -hmm. in office for 30 years, mm -hmm. they built a consensus that didn't include. So how do we repair some of the things that, that, that we do? And I, I heard you talk about the uh 
uh, event that you would do every other Monday. But what are some of the other ideas that you think that we can do as a community? And how do you think the commissioners should, should I guess, um, how can they partner with the community better? And I'm, and that's so good because mm-hmm. I thought about this. And when I say this, I'm not talking about lottery lace. I'm just talking about politics in, in, in general. Um, we've gotten a bad rap because we've not done anything. Mm-hmm. And so when you when people don't see results, um, would you pay thousands of dollars for a personal trainer? And instead of losing weight and getting toned, you're gaining weight and you're not toned. When people don't see results, they disengage. And I think now we have to have people like myself. That's why I'm coming to the table, because now we have to create and people have to see results. They have to begin to see, okay, so Dr. Stevens, you said you was going to do this. And then we can get results without consensus. So Mm -hmm. let's just say one of my platforms was affordable housing. Then I know I need to buy another commission. But if it was just communication (laughs) with our residents, I don't need no vote for that. So when I'm talking about results, I'm talking about results within your power, things that you can do to reconnect, Mm re-engage. And so those are the things when I'm talking about, you have to begin, people have to see results. Too many people are saying, oh, they get in office and they don't do anything that they promise. Okay, have we educated on the community on how government really works? And so- Mm -hmm. Little things like um, making it happen Monday. Um, the other thing, um, um, did you know series? Like we have code enforcement. I just learned that if you own property in Lauderdale Lakes and you rent it out, that you have to pay a $250 renter's fee and have an annual inspection. Do our residents know that? So I would like to create did you know series. And it'll be little things um, surrounding code enforcement, surrounding our city, so that we really can get engaged. The more Mm -hmm. informed the resident is, the more engaged. I don't, some commissioners, and I'm not talking about Lauderdale Lakes, I'm saying in general, some commissioners don't want people at the meeting because they don't want to be held accountable. I want people holding me accountable. Mm -hmm. I want you at the meetings. Mm -hmm. I want you questioning me. I want you upset because I was telling people on the campaign trail, when you buy something and they tell you money back guaranteed, I'm telling you vote back guaranteed. If I do not fulfill my commitment, if you do not see change, I promise you I won't run a second term. We have some people that do absolutely nothing and they have the audacity to put in the application and run again. And so the best way to win. (laughs) 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 It (laughs) <laughs> That's the way it looks. If you don't say anything, people play it safe. Yeah, play it, play safe. it safe. Yeah. Well, we can uh, tell that, that Dr. Stevens is not here to play it safe. That's for mm-hmm. sure. Um, I don't. I guess. Um, I guess as we begin to maybe start wrapping up, I don't know if uh, if we're near that time yet. Or if Doc wants to just put it out there, what do you think, Gary? Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah, we'll, uh, allow, we have any more we'll, we'll give you some closings. No, I was looking. I didn't see any questions. If any, if anyone has a question, by all means. Yeah, by all uh, means, we want the uh, list yeah. the viewing audience to no, come on and no, chime no, in. Uh, no, no, no. no uh, it's looking like uh, Doctor Stevens has at least the second and the third pew shouting in church. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I'm gonna let it go on tune up and close us out. <laughs> Listen, I always say this, you know, I I know, and I I say this without hesitation. Um, my pastor always used to say, if I brag, I'm bragging in the Lord. Mm-hmm. That I know that I am one of the best candidates that this city has seen in a long time. And it's not just by mere the work that I've done, volunteering on all the boards that I sit in on the city. It's not just my educational requirements. I mean, it's like the full package. I'm I'm, service is what I do. I'm Mm -hmm. being a part of my sorority, being a part of my church, being a part of the links, being a part of the cheering football program. Um, I know that my professional expertise, my innovation, my infinity for for law. Because one of the first things that I'm, I want to do is form a charter review committee and change the charter. 
The charter was formed in 1961, which our city looked so different than it does in 2022. Mm -hmm. So that is the first thing, because to change the charter, it goes to voting and all of that. So I won't be an uneducated commissioner. I'm ready day one. I'm actually ready now before day one. Yeah. And so there's just a lot of things that that can't be you can't pull a wool over my eyes. And so I know I am the not only the best candidate, I'm what's best for our city. Yeah. And um, we are. I new. am. So, mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> didn't mean to interrupt, but I am so happy to hear you speak about the point about the city charters, because that is that's the glue that holds all this together. and the when we have candidates that don't understand the city charter, especially in a mayor city manager type of relationship, uh, to hear you say that, I, I, that is way and above what we hear on a city level. And it's so important because these charters are things that stop us or, or at least encumber our government from proceeding. Because as you say, they were not designed with us in mind and with the changes that has taken place. How can we have a living charter that's 50 years old and has not addressed these 50 years of changes? Uh, yeah. So to hear you say that uh, lets me know that you really are an astute candidate because most candidates <laughs> aren't thinking about the charter yeah like and, perfect and, and, example oh i didn't mean to cut you off no go ahead no i'm saying perfect example in the commission meeting on tuesday the 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 commission meets twice a month on the second and fourth tuesday and because the charter states that they the election is november 8th so they were like, okay, we've never come to this point where the election has been on an actual meeting day. So now they go into the charter and I'm following along, but because the charter locks them into meeting at minimum twice a month, like, come on, you're restricting yourself. In the charter, you change that to meeting once a month, at least once. And your ordinance can say, we will meet twice a month because it's easier to change an ordinance than it is a charter. Our charter has right. to go through review and then change. So mm -hmm. that's one of the first, that is going to be my first plan is to really form a charter review commission and to change mm -hmm. our charter. And so that's one mm -hmm. of the things I definitely want to focus on. Because even that right. charter is what locked us in with our whole mayor, because our mayor is now going to be our county commissioner. Yeah. So. Yeah, great. Wow, it seems like Lauderdale <laughs> Lakes is getting a true a breath of fresh wow. air and I, yeah. i'm so excited for you dr stevens i tell you um living in the community where i can hear the bell ring at dillard high school i i i see where you get a lot of your drive from if you're a panther you are truly <laughs> <laughs> truly energized and passionate about this community and like perry said just the just the thought of updating the charter or making things um more workable in an environment that has changed over the past 50 years it totally doesn't look anything like it used to i can yeah. remember the lot of their lakes mall and i gotta tell you yeah. it was the bomb back in those days <laughs> we would leave lot of hill mall and go oh this was before uh brown mall and gallery right. and all of that and and uh that city had a lot to offer and a lot of folks that i knew uh, from the old neighborhoods, the people that lived over in uh, the old Fort Lauderdale area started moving and buying homes out in, in the Lauderdale Lakes area. So, uh, yes, yes, I, I, I love that community and uh, I believe that community needs uh, great representation and I'm glad that, that you're in the race. Yeah. Um, anything else before we let you go now because you, you no, I, I, mean, I just want to say you know thank you for this opportunity i am so excited it, i wake up i barely sleep because i'm at the early bonus sites at six o'clock i can barely barely sleep because i can taste it i can taste the change um there's something that's brewing in our city and i'm excited about being a part 
of, of that change. And thank you for an opportunity to even come on and just discuss and talk a little bit about what my plans are. And I'm excited to really deliver results for our residents. I'm, I'm excited about engaging all of our residents, um, at least providing them with the opportunity to be engaged, to add something different, something new. Um, it's it's changing. I'm like, okay, so we're you we're losing two of our staples, one to term limit Commissioner Beverly Williams, whose seat I'm actually running for, who actually has endorsed me. And um the mayor is going to the county. So we're losing two of the staples of our community. And so I think me being on the commission is an added value. Um, it's gonna be a change. And uh, they've been uh, they're gonna be ready. <laughs> it's, it's not, it's, it's, they're used to working with Chair Nathel Stevens. Oh. Commissioner Nathel Stevens is a whole different ball game. <laughs> they ready, huh? Yes. Okay. Oh. And on that, uh, Dr. Stevens, we're going to have you join us. Uh, we do a segment here um, each week that we've started uh, that we call How Bad Do You Want It? and that's a loaded question <laughs> it is but and and i know we we you may initially say that in terms of 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 do you want to win the race but i i can tell you're running for something much deeper uh, much broader than than most candidates um and buried beneath that that desire, that passion that I hear everyone in our audience uh, saying, so passionate, she's powerful. I, how bad do you want it to be that change for this community? How bad do you want it? I want it so bad. It's like, it's a part of my purpose. It's like I'm king and priest. Because we've separated, you know, it's almost like the mantle Dr. King had on his life. He was a pastor, but he always he also had purpose to drive change, which is the reason all of us can sit here on a live stream and have this conversation. And so it's for me, it's bigger than a title. It's bigger than holding an office. It's really about purpose. It's really about bringing a transformation process to the city of Lauderdale Lakes that that it's something that can never be robbed or taken from. Us. It's about exposing our residents, our staff, my colleagues and our businesses to something greater than they can even see with the natural eye. And so for me, it's about fulfilling purpose. It's about doing something that is a part of how God wrapped me in in my DNA, because part of my my spiritual makeup is prophetic. And it's a governmental aspect to that, where, where you take dominion and you rule. And then I totally forgot to even talk about the decades of grant writing and grant management experience that I have. That's kind of what my consulting firm does. So even the amount of resources that's coming into the city, you know, I want it bad because I'm up at, at Lot of Hill Mall at 615 every morning. <laughs> And I'm there until the poll closes. So that's how bad I want it. I'm like two shades darker, but I can taste. <laughs> when you can taste victory, it's like it gives you purpose um, to wake up. And I'm just excited. Great. That reminds me, Kobe Bryant used to be up 4.30 in the morning going to the gym. <laughs> you getting that work in. Yeah. I have walked every 7 a.m. in the morning, canvassing. 7 p.m. at night. Listen, the last community I had to walk, the new development of a commercial, they don't have elevators. Mm. And it was myself, um, my best friend, Bobby, and Lavoy Williams. And Lavoy walked all the second steps. I had to walk to the third floor of every building. <laughs> That's how bad I wanted. And I kept telling Lavoy, <laughs> I don't want to have to buy Miss Beverly a new husband. <laughs> <laughs> because he had that knee thing on. And I'm like, LaVoy, do not go up the stairs. So <laughs> when I talk about a transformation process, because it's so God, because it's so necessary, there have been people, when you have a synergy, I have a team of volunteers that have synergized with me 
These are not people that are receiving paychecks. These are people that have bought into the vision and they want to see the change. And I'm telling you to walk up all them stairs and all those buildings. And I kept saying, we, this, the last building we were done. And I remember we jumped in the car and we drove. I say, we got one more building and we got out the car. <laughs> and That's how bad I was. <laughs> all right. Great. Great. I love that. Uh, Brother David, you and I had a discussion about <laughs> this. How bad do we want it? And uh, you want to share? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm I'm a native, born and raised here, Sixth Street, Providence Hospital. You know, and Fort Lauderdale, Broward County looks a lot different now than it did then. And we are a melting pot, full of black and brown people. We, we got everything here. And uh, we bring so much talent to this community. How bad do I want it? I want to see us work together. I want to see us unite in a way that proves everybody wrong. You know, everybody's saying everybody's got these hidden agenda, these political, I, uh, you know, antics that nobody wants to work together. And, and I believe we can prove them wrong, especially when I look at candidates like Dr. Stevens. So how bad do I want it? I'm willing to work my butt off. I'm getting up at 4.30, 6 o'clock in the morning now to really just advocate for this community coming together. You know, we can work, we can, we can get it done. We bring so much talent from every pool of ethnicity. And it's important now that we utilize that and that we encourage one another in crises, we have no choice. Those people on the West Coast, I believe they're working together trying to get through through that crisis from the storm. We don't really need a storm to help bring us together, but we do need to work together in this community for the sake of all of Broward County. That's how bad I want it. Yeah. Well, I want it so bad, as I say, I, I'm willing to take my mouth and do my best to add two more ears to hear, to understand. Because I, I, I am not from Broward. I've been a spectator and I have enjoyed watching. And as I told uh, Brother Wright, my, my understanding of this area was between two bookends, one Reuben Stacy and the other one where the boys are. And neither one of those is, is the Fort Lauderdale and Lauderdale Lakes area that I love. But what I saw, I loved and I see so much potential. Uh, and so to hear people who say it's not what it was, it's not, and to hear that disengagement, as you say, I want to hear more and talk less so that we can begin to understand that we all are pushing for the same things. One of the most amazing things I, I heard when I first moved here was there was a big fight over the soccer league, over the soccer fields, <laughs> between the Caribbean community and the Haitian community. And, it's, and as an African-American who loves... American football, it would be easy for me to dismiss that and move on. But something as simple as soccer can impede the progress for all of us. And so I've learned to try to listen and learn to try to come in to help negotiate because we can't begin to come together until we all, as you say, at least if not come to that table, let's come to the campfire. Let's come around. <laughs> let's come around this, this baby and take care of this because this city is too important and too rich with our history for us to be so haphazard and casual about it because we are losing it by the day. And I say that about Broward because I am living it even in my own life. When I, uh, this past weekend, I returned home for my 40th high school reunion. 
and just to see that reminds me of, of some of these same issues that we're facing. And so uh, my commitment is to speak less, hear more, and try to help build consensus and support uh, able candidates and speak up on candidates. I think sometimes we try to be so noncommittal. In a case like a Dr. Stevens, I'm ready to toot my horn. These are the candidates that we do need to help promote and we do need to put up front uh, because this is what helps build these communities and helps get us engaged. And so I am committed uh, and that's how bad I want it is. I am just trying to help bring everybody else back into this tent. So on that, um, I just want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you uh, to our guest, Dr. Nathaniel Stevens. Thank you to my very able-bodied co-host and, and, and great rotor when Bobby just throws us out in this ocean. <laughs> Uh, my good friend, brother David Wright, but <laughs> most of all, <laughs> and thank you to Ari and Broderick, uh, our producer and who's handling the audio in the back. Uh, thank all of you. And, uh, we look forward to seeing you next week and, uh, please get out and vote. Please continue to encourage mm -hmm. those around us to vote. Thank you. And good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.